Well, hi there, meteorologist Chris Spears. Welcome to Weather School on CBSN Denver. I want to start talking to you a little bit about thunderstorms in Colorado and why we have so many. And I want to show you this map to start off with. This is from NOAA. It is the annual mean thunderstorm days from 1993 through 2018. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see the legend and these orange colors. What that's saying is how many days per calendar year any one spot records a thunderstorm in the vicinity. And these orange colors here in Florida, that is letting us know up to and even more than 100 days per year with thunderstorms in the area. Then as you move away from the Gulf of Mexico, the colors become lighter and lighter and lighter, except right here in our backyard. And that is what is so interesting. Colorado and New Mexico records as many thunderstorm days as some areas here in the deep south. So the answer is why? Well, a couple of things that you need to brew a thunderstorm here in Colorado. You need warm temperatures, usually 60s or better, and we have that on most days during the warm season between May and September or even early October. The other thing you need, you need some humidity or moisture, and we measure this through the dew point. You like dew point temperatures of 45 or higher, but 50s are even better. That means there's more moisture in the air. So how does that moisture get here? We're a thousand miles away from any major body of water. Well, the answer is surface winds. Southeasterly winds bring moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico, and that is a pretty predominant wind pattern during the summer months here in Colorado. But at times we also have south and southwest winds, and that brings moisture straight out of the tropics. This becomes particularly uh, common between late July and the middle of August. We call that the monsoon flow or a seasonal shift in the wind that brings moisture, helping set the stage for thunderstorms. All right, so there's a third part to the ingredient list here. It's most important. When you have warm, humid air, you need it to rise. We call this lift a rising motion in the atmosphere. And in meteorology, there are really four main ways uh, we get lift convection, topography, and then here at the bottom, kind of a larger scale lift. We call that convergence, which is an area of low pressure or a cold front or warm front. But I kind of want to focus on these two. What convection is, you know how when you wake up in the morning, it's beautiful outside, it's calm, it's still, you like to sit out and have your coffee. That's because the sun has just come up and the atmosphere is calm because it's settled all night long. But each passing hour with the sunshine hitting the ground, that warm air will rise naturally, creating convection, and that causes the atmosphere to churn. So by mid to late afternoon, it's breezy, it's gusty, not as pleasant to sit outside on the deck sometimes, and that's convection or a lifting motion in the atmosphere caused by sunshine. And then we get a bonus here in Colorado. We have topography that helps lift the air. A lot of mountainous terrain and foothills and all of the various uh, features here in our state. So if we have warm, humid air in place, really all we need is for that sun to rise and get the air churning. And that combined with our terrain is enough to kick off showers and thunderstorms. So we see an enhanced amount of storms here in Colorado and in parts of New Mexico. If we are expecting storms on a larger scale, you're going to see this. It's an outlook from the Storm Prediction Center just letting you know, hey, heads up, and there are five different categories for you, marginal through high. But I want to point out, you don't need a large-scale weather feature like a front or a jet stream to create thunderstorms. As you just learned, you simply need daytime heating and some moisture in place. And if you have that, you can fire up a thunderstorm. There is more on your weather coming up.